Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. The purpose of this video is to show you just what is possible using nothing other than a guitar and a computer. So the demo that I made in the beginning was done using nothing other than my guitar plugged directly into the computer. I actually made that demo at about 2 a.m. in the morning with a baby sleeping in the next room. No one could hear anything because I had my headphones on and everything was done 100% through the computer. So I used amp simulation software to get my guitar tones and then I used uh, virtual instruments to get the drum sounds and the bass sounds and the synthesizer sounds. So everything was done digitally. Um, you can do things as simple as laying down a simple uh, looped chord progression that you want to practice soloing over if you don't have a looper pedal. You can do all that with your computer. You could even take things a step further and add some drums and bass to your loop and then practice soloing over your loop that way. Um, you can even take, take things to the full production level. So if you want to make full songs or even a full album, everything that is talked about in this video applies to that as well. So everything that I'm talking about here applies to the full production of music using your computer. All right, so a few things before getting started. Number one, um, this is going to be a long video, so make sure to refer to the timestamps below if you want to jump ahead to any point. Uh, number two, uh, let's say you are a die-hard uh, tube amp fan and you absolutely refuse to use amp simulation software. That's fine. Instead of plugging your guitar directly into the uh, audio interface that then goes into the computer, you can instead just put a microphone in front of your amp and then plug the microphone into the audio interface. So you don't have to use amp simulation software. You can use your amp if you want to do things that way. But as you're, as you're going to find out in this video, there are limitations to doing that. So we'll be getting into that. But you can do that. So don't think that you have to use amp simulation software. Um, and then number three, any tools that I use, whether it's a free tool or a paid tool, I will be posting links to below. All right. So a lot of these virtual instruments and stuff like that, you can get a lot of this stuff for free. But then there's also uh, paid things available too. And I have a reason for paying for certain things, which I will explain to you why I use those things. And I'll make sure to post links to every single thing that I talk about in this video below. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is what is known as an audio interface. So the audio interface that I use is called the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2, and it has two input jacks, and each of the jacks allows you to plug a quarter-inch cable into it or an XLR cable to it. An XLR cable is just a microphone cable. A quarter-inch cable is just your basic guitar cable that you use to plug your guitar right into your amplifier. So that will take both of those kinds of inputs. You can also plug uh, any other digital instruments you may have. Maybe you have a digital piano. Maybe you have an electronic drum kit. Whatever. You can plug all that stuff right into the audio interface into one of the two input jacks. The audio interface then connects to your computer through the USB port 
of your computer, and that's how you get your sound in. So then I'm going to need to monitor your sound. So the jack all the way on the right, that's your headphones jack. That also takes a quarter inch cable. Plug your headphones right into that jack. I love to do that for my late night practice sessions. And then you control the volume of your headphone mix by using the little knob right next to the headphone jack. Um, then you may want uh, to monitor your sound, not through headphones. You may want to monitor sound in the actual room. You do that by plugging uh, using the two jacks in the back. There's a left jack and there's a right jack in the back. So ideally, you're going to want two um, studio monitors, one for the left and one for the right. But if you're not mixing music, if you really are just, if you just want to jam, if your goal is to just kind of lay down some looped chord progressions that you want to solo over, you could just simply use a guitar amp, plug it into one of the jacks. I did that for a while. I just took a little Line 6 solid state amp that I had laying around. I just uh, stuck it on top of my uh, computer desk. I plugged it right into the back of my audio interface, right into the left jack. And then I used that to monitor my sounds. If your goal is to, uh, you know, actually make professional sounding music, you know, record full songs or full albums or something like that, then eventually you're going to want to invest into uh, studio monitors. But as I said, if your goal is to just simply jam and whatever, you're not actually trying to get professional sounding recordings, a guitar amp will be fine. Cheap headphones will be fine, whatever you want. You only need exp ex expensive mixing equipment if you plan on producing professional sounding music. So the next thing that we're going to need is what is known as a digital audio workstation or DAW for short. So the one that I recommend is a program called Reaper. So Reaper is one of those nuggets of gold that you find on the internet that you can't believe it's so good for the price that it's at. Reaper is a $60 program and it comes with a 60 day fully functional free trial. Now keep in mind, I don't get compensated for uh, promoting this company at all. They don't even have a affiliate program. So I make no money by rec uh, recommending Reaper. It is just such a good program that those who use it can't believe that it's so cheap. So, you know, it's a professional doll. It is used by studio engineers all over the world. It, it's on par with all the other big players such as Ableton or Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase or Reason or FL Studio. It is, uh, it can do anything that all of those other dolls can do, but it's only $60 and it has a free trial. So it's a phenomenal software. I highly recommend it. It can be downloaded from their website, which is reaper.fm. And, um, uh, there's some free ones out there. Uh, one of the most popular free dolls out there is Audacity. I do use Audacity, but there are definitely a lot of limitations when you use Audacity. If you just want to plug a guitar into your computer and lay down a, gu a guitar track and then plug a microphone in and lay down the microphone track and then kind of mix the two tracks together and things like that, you can do that using Audacity, but there is a lot of limitations. You're not going to be able to use the digital instruments. You're not going to be able to do real-time effects editing, which you're going to learn about in this video. Um, so while a program like Audacity does have its place to do simple, you know, just simple audio recordings and things like that, it is not a fully functional professional digital audio workstation like Reaper or like Pro Tools or like Ableton or like Cubase or anything like that, all right? So if you want to do everything that I talk about in this video, you do want to get one of the paid digital audio workstations. Something like Audacity will not allow you to do everything that is covered in this video. All right, so there's three ways of getting your guitar recorded into your computer. Number one, you can simply take a microphone, put it right in front of your amplifier, and then plug the microphone into your audio interface and then record your guitar tone that way. Uh, there's two major downfalls to doing things that way. Number one, the guitar tone that you hear in the room is not going to be what you hear on the recording because the microphone is only picking up a certain portion of the overall sound spectrum. All right. Any movement of the microphone that you do, if you move the microphone a little f uh, farther away from the speaker, it's going to sound different on the recording. If you move the microphone to the left or to the right or up or down, it's going to affect the way that the recorded tone sounds. If you use a different microphone, different microphones are going to give you different recorded sounds. Uh, some people, they use a, a combination of, you know, one or two mics, maybe one mic is close to the guitar amp, and then one mic might be farther back, and then they might mix the two together to get a, you know, a really nice recorded guitar tone. But there's so many variables in there that, to me, that adds more complication than I want to deal with. So 
I don't really prefer to record my guitar tone this way. Um, another downfall of doing things that way is whatever your guitar tone is that you, you know, whatever your pedal chain happens to be, let's say you have a reverb pedal, a delay pedal, a distortion pedal, uh, and any other effects, whatever, whatever tone you have going through your amp as you're playing, and then the microphone picks up that tone with all the added effects, those effects can't be undone. So if you record a guitar tone using a mic in front of your amplifier uh, and there's delay and reverb already on there, you can't take that away after the recording has been uh, put into the computer. So that's another downfall. And then of course, you know, you can't, you can't do recordings uh, loud or late at night if you have people in your house or neighbors next door or something like that. So I don't prefer to record my guitar tone that way. Um, the second way that you can record your guitar tones, a lot of amplifiers, they'll have a, a line out jack in the back of the um, in the back of the amp. So you can just take a quarter inch cable, plug it right into the line out jack, plug the line out jack right into your audio interface, and then essentially you're recording direct in at that point. So you know that'll that'll keep the volume under control. So you can still use your headphones to monitor your sound. People in the house won't be able to hear you. But again, um, whatever whatever tone that you have in your effects chain, whatever delays or reverbs or choruses or distortions or anything like that, whatever you lay down on the recorded track, you can't undo that stuff. So that's the second method, also not my preferred method. Um, the third way is to use amp simulation software, and this is my preferred method. Because number one, technology is getting so good these days they are doing such a good job of emulating um, great amplifier and uh, cabinet combinations. And, uh, you know, the, the tones are just so good. But not only that, but you can have full control over your tone after the recording is already laid down. So I may want to uh, lay down a solo. I may want to record a solo over a rhythm section using, you know, like a, a perfectly dialed in tone. And then let's say I don't like that tone that much. Let's say I want to change the delay or remove the delay, or maybe I want to remove some of the distortion, or maybe I want to whatever. I can completely alter the tone within the computer after the track has already been laid down because the only thing that was actually inputted into the computer was a clean, unaffected guitar signal. Everything else was then, you know, simulated. All of the other effects and all the other... Uh, processing was done in the computer therefore i can alter the tone in any way i want after i am have already been done re recording all right so real quickly i just want to talk about the amp simulation chain before turning the video around and then working within the doll the remainder of the video after this will be inside of the doll but um let's think of a typical chain a typical chain may be your guitar plugs into a tube screamer pedal which then plugs into an amplifier, which then plugs into a cabinet, which then has a microphone in front of the cabinet, and then that, that microphone plugs into the audio interface. So that would be a typical live rig chain and getting a recorded tone that way. So amp simulation chain is the same thing, but you can do that all digitally. So they have uh, digital pedals and you can download a free uh, Tube Screamer uh, pedal, which a link to that will be below. So let's say you have that in your chain. And then the next part of the chain will be the amp simulation software. There's a couple different ones that, um, you know, I like to use. Again, links to all that stuff will be below. I'll be walking you through that through the rest of this video too. Um, but that's the amp portion of the chain. The next portion of the chain will then be a combination of the cabinet and the microphone placement. Because as I said, depending on where you place the microphone in relation to the cabinet speaker will affect how the recorded tone sounds. Also, if you use different cabinets, every kind of different cabinet that you use, every kind of different microphone that you use, every kind of different uh, microphone placement that you use, all of that stuff, that's the, the final part of the chain. That's known as an impulse response. So an impulse response is a combination of a guitar cabinet and a microphone placed in a certain position uh, in, in relation to the speaker. All right, so I'm here in Reaper now, and I have a pre-recorded guitar track, and uh, there's absolutely no processing done to this as it is right now. I just plugged my guitar directly into my interface, and I hit record, and then I laid down this track. So I can't 
Uh, I can't do a demonstration of using the amp simulator live, so I can't have my guitar in my hand and mess around with the different uh, tones and stuff like that. The only reason I can is because I'm recording this video also, and I'm using Audacity, which is another DAW to record, you know, to record the audio for this video. So if I do try and simultaneously uh, play live guitar while recording this video, it's going to cause a nasty feedback loop. So it's just not going to work for this tutorial video. But if you, you know, you, you just want to plug in your guitar and jam with an amp simulator, you just have to make sure that this button is on, record arm is on, so you get your signal, and then you have to make sure that record monitoring is on so that you um, you can hear yourself, you can hear the uh, amp sim being applied in real time. I have to keep mine off, otherwise that feedback loop will occur. But for the purposes of this video, I just simply recorded a pre-recorded track, and I'm going to apply the amp simulation afterwards. So you can apply the amp simulation at any point you want. Why you're recording, after you're recording, a mixture of both, it doesn't matter. So here's what the unaffected guitar uh, signal sounds like. And I have this. And I have this. So that's just a unaffected guitar tone, and I want to apply this amp simulation to it. So what you do is you come to... Um, Effects, anytime you want to apply anything to any track, it's all found right here in Effects. And uh, Reaper comes with a ton of plugins, tons of them. But you can also install your own, and they're known as VSTs. So uh, you come to VST here, and uh, we'll, I'll show you more about this VST stuff in the next section as well. But uh, here's where you find it. This is S-Gear. This is the uh, amp simulator that I use. This is a uh, paid program. This cost $129. Uh, I'll I'll also show you in this part how to do this stuff uh, using a free amp simulator program as well. But this is the one I like, Eskier. I highly recommend this. So um, this is now on. So I'm just going to choose a preset. I really like the sound of this preset here, text driven clean. So let me first not play with the amp preset. So you can turn it off here. You can also turn it off right here. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to turn it off first, and let me just play it. So now I'll turn it on. Sounds pretty different, right? So, you know, that was just the Texas Driven Clean preset. Uh, let me try this Plex Monster preset. Also pretty cool. Uh, how about Steely Deluxe? So that's just messing with the uh, different presets. So let me just um, come down to Texas Driven Clean again. And then, of course, you can tweak all these knobs and all these switches and stuff like that. Um, you can ch uh, choose different amps. So this uh, program, S-Gear, comes with five different amps. So you just right-click in the amp section, click Select Amp. And uh, it comes with the Duke, it comes with the Steeler, it comes with the Jackal. So each of these amps has a different, you know, different characteristics and stuff like that. All right, so I'm just going to leave it at the Steeler because that's the one for this particular preset. So this is the amp simulation part of the chain. Then you have the, uh, the uh, impulse response part of the chain. This is the cabinet section. So you can choose different cabinets here. So you just click this arrow here, choose different cabinets, 112 cabinet, 212 cabinet, 412 cabinets, and that's all going to affect the tone too. Um, and then you have mic configurations. So this, uh, this comes with a Dynamic 57 mic, a Ribbon 160, a Ribbon 121, and then you can change the microphone placement of the mic by using this. So all this affects the tone. This is all the impulse response part of the chain. Okay. So there's really a lot that you can play around with here. You can also load your your own impulse responses. All that an impulse response is is just a uh, a wave file. So, you know, I downloaded a pack off of uh, the Celestian website. It cost me ten dollars, and it's the Orange Two Twelve Cabinet Pack. So, you can load them in over here, impulses, and you can see Orange PPC Two Twelve. So this is all the different mic configurations for this orange PPC-212 cabinet. And every one of these that I use is going to slightly alter the tone. So rather than, rather than using the impulse responses that this program comes with, you can also load them in yourself. 
So I, I had already loaded them in. That's why they're in here. So, you know, let's just hear how uh, the different cabinets affect the tone. So let me just start with this one. So when I use these uh, impulse responses, you want to just one of the cabinets. It gives you an option to use two cabinets. I just put it on one of the cabinets, and then I keep cabinet number two slaved. You can either keep it off completely. You can use a totally separate cabinet. Or you can keep it slaved, meaning that both of these are kind of running together. It's all running off of the orange. It's all running off of just the one cabinet. So um, let me just show you how this sounds with just this one cabinet. It sounds slightly different, but you know, then you come over to these ones. So hopefully you're able to tell the, the slight difference in these tones. But, you know, every single one of these is just a slight alteration to the tone. So you're really dial, dialing in the amp sound right here. And then, you know, this is just the other half of the chain. This is the, uh, the cabinet and the microphone part of the chain, the impulse response part. So, you know, there's all of these to try out. I usually just find one that sounds pretty good, and then I just kind of go with that. Otherwise, I could spend hours trying to trying to choose the perfect one out of all the 50 options or whatever so you know let's say i like this one i i the first one always just sounds great you know this one right here so so i just go with that now if i want to add a, uh, a pedal in front of the chain like i talked about you can do that too so if i want to add another effect to this track i would uh, either go effects add effects or i could just right click and then go add effects that way and uh, here's another one that I installed. This is a free one that I found, which I will link you to below, the Tube Screamer. All right, so you want that to go before the amp. The order of the, uh, the, order of the effects does matter over here, so you want this to go above this right here. So now I have my Tube Screamer first, then the amp second. So it's in that order. So let's hear what it sounds like with the Tube Screamer. And then here's without it. So you can hear that it definitely affects the tone. So I'm just going to leave the Tube Screamer off for this one because I don't really like the sound of that. So you don't have to actually remove it. You can delete it. Or you can just turn it off by unchecking it and then it will be out of the chain. So I'm going to leave that tone for that. But let's say I want a different tone for uh, this one here. So I can just simply hit uh, S and that will split the track. And then I'll hit S again because I want a different tone for that too. And then I want to just add a new track here. So I'm just going to double click and that'll make a new track. Let me just move this down to this track. I'll make another track here. Then I'll move this down to this track. So let me apply the effects to this track. So I'm going to have a completely different guitar tone. So let me uh, turn on S gear. And I like this lead tone. This is a tone that I designed. It's not really, I'm not going to say designed it, but I tweaked enough knobs and then I saved it and I called it lead tone. So this is a tone that I made up that's not a preset. So I applied that to this channel. So let's hear how that sounds. It's pretty heavily processed, a lot of delay, a lot of reverb. Here's without the, or without the amp simulator. And then with it. All right, and then let's say I want to do another one for down here. You can still close these windows, and as long as the green is on, as long as FX is green, that means that some of some effects are being applied. If it's grayed out, that means that it doesn't have any effects on it at all. So uh, let me do a different tone for down here. Again, I'm going to do this S gear, and uh, I'm going to come to presets. I'm going to try the very first preset, which is American Clean. I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit turn the level up and I'm just gonna go with that so here's without it and then here's with it so it's not much of a difference um, let's say I want to do a different cab I'll just use a preset cabinet this time so instead of the 112 let me go with the uh, 
I'll try a 412 uh, modern. I'll try this one. So let's see how this one sounds. All right, so it's starting to sound a little bit more beefy of a clean tone. Uh, let me go and add a uh, effect to it. So this program comes with a reverb unit, a delay unit, and a uh, uh, it comes with a mod unit. So add device, you right click, add device comes up. So delay thing, mod thing, and room thing. So I'm going to add the the mod thing, and this gives you the option to add chorus or flange to your tone. So I'm going to just turn up some of these knobs to make sure that it has a good amount of chorus sound to it. And let's hear how it sounds now. All right, so now it even is starting to sound better. And you can move these effects around too. Like say I want the chorus in the chain here, or let's say I want the chorus to come before the cabinet or the room, the reverb unit, things like that. So you can move these all around however you want. And... I actually like the reverb down here a little better, but you can see how this is working, and you can tweak these as much as you want, and it's, you know, this is, you can do whatever you want. You can record the tone one way, and then tweak the tone after you're done recording, and you have full control over it. So, uh, and then if I wanted to even beef up the tone more, I can go and add another, um, another effect here, and uh, so Reaper comes with a bunch of them, the ones, the actual uh, Reaper plugins are Kakos. That's the name of the company. Those are the Reaper, the REA Cast, REA Comp, REA. Anytime you see REA, that's an actual Reaper plugin. It also comes with a bunch of these JS plugins. But these uh, Reaper plugins are really good. Um, so REA Comp is a compressor. So you can put a compressor on there. And I'm not really going to get into the details about how a compressor works in this video. But just turn the ratio up and turn the threshold uh, we're going to adjust the threshold and then make sure you have auto makeup gain checked because any volume reduction will be made up by checking auto makeup so let's hear how this sounds all right so that kind of beefed up the tone a little bit so you can really mess around with this stuff and dial in your tone using the compressor but here is uh, without it, without the compressor. And then with the compressor. So it definitely beefs it up. And, um, you know, I didn't have to mess with the volume fader or anything like that. So that's using S Gear. That's the paid program that I prefer. You can also use um, a free one. So let me show you that one. So let's let's go with this tone again. Let's get rid of this pedal here let's get rid of uh, this amp here I just hit delete there so now this this uh, track has no nothing on it so I'm gonna go back to my effects I'm gonna go to VST and then ignite emissary I'll give you a link to this one too this is this kind of like a metal amp but it has a lot of uh, you know you can really mess with it and it, you don't have to use it for metal so you can get some good tones out of it. So just, just playing this amp alone, it's not going to give you a great tone because it doesn't have the cabinet part of it, but it'll you'll still see that the tone will be affected. So let's hear how it sounds without the cabinet. <laughs> sounds pretty bad, right? So um, let me go to uh, when you download this Ignite Emissary amp, it also comes with the uh, impulse response loader. So if you're not using S-Gear, or something like that which comes with an IR loader and you're just going to download just an amp sim then you're going to have to download an uh, IR loader separately so when you download this uh, Ignite Emissary pack it comes with both so Ignite Emissary is the amp part Ignite NAD IR is the uh, IR loader so this works the same way um, I think this actually comes with some with some IRs but I'm not sure but I'm just going to just go and add them myself so click on the folder I'm gonna find the uh, folder where I have previously stored my impulse responses here's the Celestian orange 212 pack that I bought from the uh, Celestian website for ten dollars and then here's a free pack that you can get from uh, redwires.com I'll post links to all these things below don't worry um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and load in my orange pack so you, you just click on one of the files and it 
loads everything in the folder for you. So um, then I'm going to do it on this side too because one cab here, one cab here. All right, so let me just keep it. Uh, I'll keep it on the same one for both. So let's hear how it sounds with the cab now. See how much different it sounds once you add the whole cabinet part. And then you can mess around with these different uh, configurations and stuff like that. And then you have, you know, knobs to tweak and stuff. There's so many things that you can tweak about your tone. It's it's ridiculous. It's insane. But, you know, the the, uh, the chain is still the same. I have my amp, then I have my impulse response. And then if I wanted to, I can go ahead and add in uh, my tube screamer pedal. I would want to make sure to put that in the front of the chain. <laughs> Alright, so that's the overview of how amp simulators work. So as you can see, you have uh, total control over your tone uh, after the recording has already been put into the computer. So you can record your tone one way and then completely alter it into something completely different before or after the recording happens. Alright, so now let's take a look at virtual instruments and how to use them in your DAW and then how much control that you have over them. So these things are super versatile and there's a zillion uh, digital instruments out there. Before I even get started, I just want to uh, uh, give a plug to this one website that I found on Reddit. This is the uh, 250 must-have free VST plugins. This is your URL up here. So I'm going to post a link th to this below. Um, hopefully he doesn't you know, change this at any time, but I have this saved in my bookmarks because this has a ton of plugins. This has synthesizer plugins, it has, you know, um, vocal plugins, it has guitar plugins, it has bass plugins, it has piano plugins, it has all kinds of stuff. So there's 250 free digital instruments or, free, or 250 free virtual instruments uh, that you can get from this website. So I love this website. Um, so, how do you get these into your DAW in the first place? So, let's look at that. So, in Reaper, you're just simply going to come to Options, and then you're going to come to Preferences. And then, in your Preferences, you're going to come down here to VST. And then, you just want to make sure that the uh, file path for where you are downloading your uh, VST plugin is in here. So, in here, there's actually three file paths that I have. Uh, C Program Files, x86 Steinberg VST Plugins. Then if you want to add another path, you put a semicolon and then put your next file path. And then semicolon C program files slash common files slash VST3. If I wanted to add another folder where other plugins go, I would just simply add a semicolon here and then add that file path in. So coming down to uh, my actual computer, I'll show you what these look like. Program C. So program files, when you download Reaper, it automatically populates it with this uh, Steinberg folder. So Steinberg, VST plugins, and VST plugins come in the form of DLL files. So you find the DLL file whenever you download one of these VST plugins, you put it in your folder, which is uh, where you're pointing to in Reaper. So C, program files, Steinberg, VST plugins. And then any once I download, I just uh, copy right to this folder. And then Reaper will uh, then see that, and you can add them to your tracks. All right, so then when I downloaded the S Gear program, Scuffa Amps, Scuffa Amps is who makes S Gear. That folder was automatically added, and then S Gear VST. So that that one was put in there. All right, so C program files, Scuffa Amps, S Gear VST. Okay, I think I actually uh, copied the DLL file out of here. And then I put it into that Steinberg folder, just so they're all in the same place. Yeah, here it is, S Gear here. So I like to keep all my, uh, I like to keep my plugins in just one folder. So program files, Steinberg VST plugins, which is pointed to in Options, Preferences, VST, C program files, Steinberg VST plugins. All right. So that's how you um, get your doll to read these things. So. What I have here is I have uh, two pre-recorded guitar tracks, the one that I used from the demo. So I just recorded the same part twice, and I panned one all the way to the left, and I panned one all the way to the right. And then I altered the tone a little bit for each uh, guitar part, so it was actually like two, two, guitar, two completely separate guitar parts as opposed to just copying one and pasting it. So it sounds like this.
So let me first start out by adding drums. So I'm just going to uh, use a free drum kit here. Um, so I'm just going to make a new track by double clicking. And uh, now the thing that you want to realize when you're using these virtual instruments is that everything's based on this grid. And this grid is all determined by the tempo that you set for your project. So this project is set at a BPM of 65. Pretty slow. And then it's in a 4-4 time signature. So you can change this to whatever you want. Uh, and you can, uh, you know, change your time signature to whatever you want. And then when you're recording the guitar track, you can just turn your metronome on. And that will help you to record your guitar in time to whatever the tempo of the project is set at. So then when you want to go and add drums, that will sync to your project tempo. So let me go and add a, a free drum kit. So I'm going to click FX. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for in the VST, you can come down to Instruments. And I have a bunch of them down in here, too. So, MT Power Drum Kit. This is actually a free uh, drum program. So, I'm going to add that. <clears throat> and this is pretty simple to use. Basically, you just uh, come to your grooves. And I'm going to... It has a bunch of different types of grooves. So, I'm just going to go with uh, eighth notes, uh, closed hi-hat. And you can try out these different grooves to see which ones you like just by double-clicking on them. So some of them sound kind of funny because we're at such a slow tempo. We're at 65 BPMs. But, um, you yeah, know, let's just go with this first groove here. So if I want to add this, uh, if I want to add this first groove to my track, so I'm going to add it right there. So I can just simply click this and drag it right to here. So it's going to add the drum track. So the drums are right on time, right with this 65 BPM tempo. My guitar is uh, is slightly off, and that's just because I'm a human, and you know I just my timing's a bit off. <clears throat> but this is completely uh, in time with the uh, tempo. So this is only going to give you three fourths of the um, three fourths of a bar. So you have one, two, three, and then this would be your full bar right here. So the reason that is is because they want you to add a fill every time. So you have a bunch of fills. Every groove, or every uh, every one of these folders comes with a bunch of grooves and a bunch of fills. So you can try out the different fills. Let me just go with fill from number four. I'll put that right there. And then now you're going to see it has the drum beat followed by the fill. So it added a fill, and then now it's the start of the next bar. So if I wanted maybe to go to an eighth, eighth notes on the ride, I could do that. Choose a groove. Let me try groove number six, and then fill number 15. So I'm going to just drag in gro uh, groove number six here, and then fill 15 over here. See how that sounds. So um, I didn't personally like that beat or that fill, so I would just try other ones out. But um, so let's just keep it simple. Let's just uh, copy both of these. Just simply copy and then paste, and I'll just keep the same drum beat all along. So let's say I wanted to um, alter this drum beat in a way. So this is all MIDI. So the way that MIDI works is you can just double click on it, and a piano roll is going to come up. It's called. So you can edit all of your MIDI notes over here very easily. So just by clicking on the piano roll, you can hear which note of the piano is associated with which drum. So so you can go and add in any notes that you want. And you can change this grid. This grid is changed to a quarter right now. Let me go and change it to uh, 
sixteenths or even thirty seconds. All right, so this has changed to thirty second notes now. So let's say I want to add in so this is the bass line here. So let's say I want to add in some more bass hits. Let's I want to put a bass hit right here. Let's see how that sounds. That sounded cool. Let me add uh, two bass hits here. Sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and do that to all of them. That sounded cool. That sounded cool. So here's my modified drum beat. I just modified that block of MIDI right there. So let's say I don't like this block of MIDI here. I'll just delete that. I'll copy this one. I will paste it here. Now that drum beat is added to both of those. All right, so that's pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and add a bass line now. So I'm just going to add a new track here. And uh, I'm going to go to my effects. Now let me first show you a free bass thing that I use. So this is a TAL bass line, T-A-L bass line, and that's found under instruments. And I got that from that uh, website that I showed you, that 250 must-have free VST plugins. I found that there. So this sounds like this. So mess around with some presets here. Let me try, uh, I'll try clean bass, see how that sounds. I don't really want that. Let's try soft bass. It's kind of a cool sound. So I can either control this piano just by clicking on it like this, or I can uh, use a MIDI controller, an external MIDI controller. The one that I use is the MPK Mini. It costs $100, and you just plug that right into the USB port of your, um, uh, of your computer and then you just select your input right here input mono input stereo or input MIDI so I just choose input MIDI and because my M my MPK mini is plugged into my computer it comes up here and then you just select all channels so now my uh, MIDI controller is So I can do all the controlling for my MIDI controller there. Um, if you don't want to buy a MIDI controller, you can also use, you can come to view, and then you can go to a uh, virtual MIDI keyboard, and then a, a virtual MIDI keyboard will pop up, and then these letters represent the uh, keys on your keyboard. All right, so you can, you can control your MIDI that way too, and then you would just want to select input MIDI. You would want to make sure that you have a virtual MIDI keyboard selected all right but i'm just going to keep it on uh this one i'm not going to use my external midi controller uh i'm actually just going to go ahead and i'm just going to paint in the base so in order to do that you can just paint in an, an empty midi item so in order to do that you just uh, click where you want to start you hold in control uh, if you're on a pc or command if you're on a mac and then it turns into a pencil like this and then you just draw in an empty midi thing like that so this is an empty MIDI thing, ready to have notes added to it. The effect is already applied onto the track, so any MIDI notes that I add to this track are going to sound like this. It's going to have that tone. Uh, so you just double click to open up the piano roll. And here's the piano roll again. So I'm going to change this to 1 16th note grid. So let's hear all this. Let me see the octave I want to be in at first. I kind of want to be in this octave here for my bass. So let's hear how this sounds. So the guitar part is going D to C to E. So D to C to E. And then the E is held out longer. So let me just paint these in. So the D note. And then to the C note. And then to the E note, which is right here. So let's see if that lines up. 
All right, and then um, in order to copy this over to the other one, two, three, you can just click. Uh, you can either hold Control down or hold Shift down, and then it'll it'll copy everything in its path. And then you hold Control, and these are just shortcuts that you'll learn. The more you play around in any doll, every doll has shortcuts using your keyboard keys and stuff like that. That's why I know these. I have them memorized, so. That way you don't have to go and paint them all in. So now I have... Uh and then you can change the velocity of each note too by using these down here. The velocity is how hard the notes are hit. So let's say I want it to... You know, maybe I want this to slowly build up. Give it more of a human feel. All right, so you can't really tell because I didn't add that much velocity variation, but you can really... Um, and then if you want, these are all snapping to the grid here. So I have my grid set to 16th notes. So snapping is enabled. If you turn snapping off, you can make it even more human sounding, have have it slightly off and things like that. That way it's not perfectly aligned to the grid. It'll have a slightly more human feel to it. See, so you can make all these alterations just in the MIDI roll here or the piano roll here. So I kind of liked it being snapped to the grid, so I'm just going to keep it like that just for the purpose of this tutorial. Keep everything nice and uh, nice aligned to the grid like that. So I like that, and I can just simply copy that, and I can paste it. So now that MIDI is painted in. <laughs> If I don't like that bass tone, I can always change it. I can come here. I can use different presets. I can, um, you know, I can tweak these controls here, st stuff like that. Um, or I can just use a, a different plugin altogether. So let's say I don't like this plugin. I'll just delete it, and then I'll add another plugin. I'll just double click. Um, this is one ample bass. So ample bass here. So this is another one I bought. This is a hundred nineteen dollar program. You can also download the light version for free from the Ample Bass website. Um, so let's just hear how this sounds now. So this is going to give you a different bass tone. So now you can really hear that the velocity is the the velocities that I changed are really being affected. So let me go ahead and uh, turn those velocities back up. So when you're using this plugin, the velocities are really apparent. But and then you can change the different uh, types of bass tone that it has. I like this one. I like direct bass. All right. So if I really want to do, I can just keep messing and find the the perfect velocities and stuff like that. And you can do a lot of stuff within this program too. If you buy the full version, you can really. Um, it's called. Uh, I forget what it's called. Some kind of riff creating riffer, they call it. So you can create your own bass bass riffs and have slides and slap and really make it sound like a, a real bass player is playing. If you want to put the time into you know perfecting these, uh, they really learn these programs. So these programs are really amazing. So I'm just going to keep it very simple like that. And uh, let's say I even want to add an EQ after it. So uh, Reaper comes with. Uh, Another one of Reaper's plugins is Re-EQ, a really good EQ program. You can make this bigger if you need to. So now I have an EQ, so I just want to um, I want to cut all the highs out of this and just really let the lows shine through. So I'm just going to click on number four. I'm going to choose, 
It's called low pass. So that makes the curve look like this. And then you can just drag this over and really f just kind of So let me delete this because I had the velocities from before. So I'm going to recopy this, repaste this. So I just added some EQ after the bass. So without the EQ, it'll sound like this. With the EQ, it'll sound like this. Not really much of a difference, but... I just kind of cut out all the highs so when the final mixing part comes that leaves some rooms for some of the other instruments to shine through which in this case is mostly the, just the guitar parts. So I cut all the highs out of the bass leaving the bass just occupying the lower end of the spectrum. So you can see how powerful this MIDI stuff is. You know you just kind of download these uh, virtual instruments, you get a starting point, you open up the piano roll, you mess around, you add notes, you tweak it, you change the velocities, you move things around. You copy parts, you paste parts, you change your tones and stuff like that. You can really get very, very creative with this stuff. All right, so working with loops and reaper is very simple, and this is probably where you're going to be spending the majority of your time uh, with regards to just soloing over loops if that's what you want to do, or if you want to you know, really dial in and write some really nice bass lines or drum parts or uh, when you're in the mixing process you want to just loop a certain section and just mix a certain section just simply laying down a loop is uh, very very helpful so to do that in Reaper you just simply uh, select the uh, area that you want to uh, loop so let's say we want to loop from here to here so you can just click anywhere on the screen and hold in the mouse button oops hold in the mouse button and then just highlight the area so that's going to be the looped area so anywhere else you clear or you click on the screen is not going to affect the looped area if you want to uh, increase or decrease the size of the looped area you just come right to the edge of it and change it like that all right so anywhere you click won't get rid of that looped area though if you want to if you want to get rid of the looped area you just hit escape all right so that's how you get rid of it and then to make sure that looping is enabled, then you want to have this on as well. So toggle repeat is on. If it's grayed out, looping is off. If it's uh, green like that, then looping is on. So the way it works is anywhere this starts, the cursor will get to the looped area, and then it'll play through the looped area, and then it'll start back at the looped area, and then continuously repeat. So let's just start from outside of the looped area right here. So you see how I just opened up the uh, the base right there, and I just kind of tweaked the base a little bit. So let me delete this one. I got that base part sounding a little better. So now if I just wanted to solo over this uh, looped area right here, then I could just uh, create another track, double-click, turn on my effects, select S gear or whatever other amp simulator you're using. Maybe if you're using the free ones, just select that. Select the tone that you want to jam with. I like to start out with Texas Driven Clean. And uh, like I said, I can't do a live demo of this because I'm recording this tutorial video. But for you at home, where you're not trying to simultaneously record audio for a tutorial video and you don't have to worry about any feedback loops occurring, you would just simply have your uh, effect enabled, your amp sim enabled, and then you would want to have record monitoring on. I'm going to turn mine off and then you want to have record arm on as well. So this will allow the signal to come in. You can see the signal coming in over here. And then this will allow you to hear your guitar being played back 
as you're playing. So you'll be able to hear the, the simulated guitar tones. I can't turn this on because as soon as I turn this on, it'll start making crazy feedback. But that's only because of my uh, situation of recording this tutorial video. So that's all you have to do. And then you can just jam over top of this. And then you just simply hit play. So as the rest of the stuff is playing, you're, you'll be jamming. Your guitar playing will be in real time. And the loop will be just going on and on. So... All right, and you can just jam over that loop for as long as you want. And then if you want to, you know, tweak other guitar tones or something like that, maybe you want to really try to dial in a nice guitar tone here, simply just... All right, so you see I can do this. I'll, the loop's just continuously playing, and I'm adding or I'm changing effects in real time. Or if I wanted to jam, if I had a guitar, or you know, if I was able to uh, demonstrate this for you, I could just jam over top of that in real time using this track as the uh, the armed track. So let me just go ahead and delete that track because I won't be demonstrating any live guitar playing for you in this video. But that's basically uh, it, that's that's how loops work. So very simple to use in Reaper, but very powerful. You can do a lot of stuff, and you can do a lot of editing in real time. And as I said, it's probably where most of your um, most of uh, your time is going to be spent working with loops. All right. So now I just want to give you a basic overview of the mixer in Reaper. So these are just all your tracks. This is the uh, project file for the uh, demo that I did in the beginning of this video. So um, these are all my tracks. I have a drum track, a bass track, I have a bunch of guitar tracks here, and then I have a, a synth sound here, and then a couple uh, guitar delay tracks. So, um, you know, you can adjust your volumes and stuff here. If you want to view the actual mixer, you can come here and go view mixer. And, you know, your, vix your mixer kind of appears like behind the main work area. So if I wanted to drag this across, I could see all of my uh, mixing channels. But I like to um, I like to set it up so it's just the width of one channel, like this. That way I can toggle between channels and I can uh, adjust the fader like that. You know, for any of the channels that I uh, select. Um, if you want to view the whole mixer, which is what we're going to do now, then you can hit Alt-O if you're on a PC. And I believe if you're on a uh, Mac, I think it's Option O. I think Option is the same thing as Alt on uh, a Mac. I'm on a PC though, so I'm going to hit Alt O, and it's going to do this. So this is my full mixer right here. Uh, but before I get to the mixer, let me uh, go back. So I want to select a looped area that I'm going to mix. So let me first make sure that snapping is turned on. Snapping is disabled. Now it's enabled. That way, I, um, the area that I select will snap right to the grid, so I'll be starting right on the beats that I want. So, I want to select this area right here. Starting there, ending here. So, this is actually the most, uh, the most powerful part of the song. So, I'm just going to loop that area, make sure looping is enabled. Yes, it is. So, I'm going to go back to my main mixing board. So... First, let me. Uh, I like to uh, put all my volumes to zero when I start mixing. All right, so I have all my volumes set at zero now, and I also want to uh, be able to view the master track. So you just come over here to where there aren't any tracks, and you right click. You'll see right at the top it says master track. It says show in mixer. All right, so that brings up my master track right here. So the whole objective here is to uh, make all the levels even without causing the master track to clip. So I have this area looped here, so it's just going to loop this area here. Let me bring back up the mixer. And um, so, yeah, I'm just, you can just hit space bar to make it start playing.
and just hit space bar to stop it. So that's basically how it works. So you can, you know, you want to spend a lot of time trying to get all the levels adjusted right. And then, you know, there was actually no Guitar 3 in this particular part. So if I wanted to mix Guitar 3 in there, oh, I forgot to mix the atmosphere, the synth sound in there too. But um, anyway, you get the idea here. I'm trying to mix all the levels of uh, volume without causing anything to clip over here. So let me show you what clipping would So you just want to try and get all of these levels even and kind of as loud as you can without causing clipping on the master track. So that's as far as the volumes go. Then you can pan things using these faders here. So you can see guitar one left, guitar one right. That's the same guitar part. One is panned 100% left. One is panned 100% right. Um, you can, you know, pan things maybe 50% or 25% or whatever. Anytime you double click on something, it brings it right back to the center. So that's centered now. All right, so you can do panning, and then you can view the effects on any track. So if you pull down, you can see which effects are on each track. So this has four effects on it. You know, the guitar, this has three effects on it. You know, and sometimes the effects are, you know, the either an amp simulator or, you know, an actual uh, virtual instrument, which is the case for the bass here. This has uh, the first effect is the actual bass digital instrument or the bass virtual instrument. And then if you want to drag them all down at once, you can hold in Control or Command if you're on Mac. And then Control and drag, and then it'll show you all of this information, all of the uh, effects that are applied to each track. Hold down Control again or Command and bring it back up. And then you can then go and add effects to any track. So, you know, let's say I wanted to uh, add an effect to, I don't know, any track. Just click on that, and then this window comes up. You can go ahead and add effect add any effects just like you normally would so that's the uh, basic overview of uh, the mixer the last thing I wanted to talk about was just uh, mixing drums so I'm using uh, actually for this track that I made I'm using a different I'm using easy drummer so this is actually a paid program the one I showed you earlier was the free drum program the MT power drums so this has a really good mixing console in it so I don't really need to do anything else regarding or as far as mixing drum goes outside of this so i've had uh, you know two kick mics two snare mic hi-hat mic tom's mic overhead uh mics uh and then you know reverbs uh overall eq for the whole drum set bass and treble so you this is really powerful right here you can do a lot of stuff right in here if i wanted to i could send each of these individual things out to its own track and then I would have a, I would have one, two, three, four. I would have like ten more tracks out here, and then I control it. I could control it out in the main doll, and then apply any effects I wanted to, and basically have more control than this. But this is plenty for me, just working right within the plugin. I have plenty of control, and um, you know, you can do that same type of thing in this MT Power Drum Kit as well. If I wanted to use that, I would just go to the mixer. So this has its own internal mixer as well. Um, again, but if you wanted to, you could send each one of these out to their own track out here and then have more control. But for, uh, I'm not trying to make any, you know, I'm not trying to make anything on the radio right now. So for me, this is plenty of control just using the mixer within the plugin. And then I just have one master fader for the whole drum set. So that's pretty much the overview of the mixer. All right, so after your mix is just about done and you have all your volume levels where you want them to be and you have uh, any EQs added to any tracks that you want to add EQ to or compression or any other effects, uh, then you kind of, you can go and you can really fine tune things. And I just want to show you just how powerful, uh, you know, it is when you're working in a professional doll such as this one. So I just want to give you one example of, you know, what you may do to fine tune something. There's a million other things you could do. This is just one example. So this is a, a little delay trick. So let me solo uh, lead guitar number two here, and then I'm going to solo this track down here, and I'll explain why in a second. So listen to the delay on lead guitar number two. All right, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a fast delay. Now listen to the delay right here. So 
So it's actually a longer delay. It's um, it's a quarter note delay uh, if you're counting one, two, three, four. So it's quarter note delay. <laughs> But that quarter note delay isn't applied to this part right here. And the reason is, is because um, I'm actually using a trick called parallel processing. And um, it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. So let me actually walk you through how you would go about doing this. So let me delete this guitar delay number two track here. And so you can really dial in the, in the uh, delay on just the track right here. So I have uh, S gear applied to this track. And I can really come and uh, do this delay thing however I want. So I can, if this blue light is on, you, that is uh, set to sync to the tempo. So it's the blue light's on, it's set to sync. Open this up. Right now it's set to uh, dotted 16th notes. Um, so if I wanted to set it to quarter sync, it'll sound like this. So that's actually the speed that I wanted for right here. But, you know, I just wanted it for just that one part. So this faster delay, this 1 16th dotted, or this dotted 16th delay was, uh, was plenty for the whole track, but I just wanted a different lay, delay for just that one part. So what I did was I created a new track and I added delay to this track. So this is uh, Reaper comes with a good delay unit. Kakos is the Reaper company. Rhea Delay. So this is a really good, um, a really good delay unit. So this is the uh, this is going to be the sound that I'm sending to this track, and then this track is going to be 100% uh, processed or 100% delay. So I want to keep my wet at zero, and I want to keep dry down. Because lead guitar 2 is technically going to be the, the dry sound that is going to be sent to this delay unit. And I'm going to put my length here. So 4 eighth notes is a half note. A little bit of math there. 2 eighth notes is actually a quarter note. So that's the delay that I want. So this track has that delay that I want. So then I'm going to send this track to this track by simply grabbing on the routing and then dragging it down to this track. See how a little pin icon comes up? So you drag it to there. All right, so now it's saying track 10, lead guitar two, it's being sent to track 16. All right, so now this will have that delay on there. So it's only one. So if I wanna have multiple of those uh, tails, those delay tails, I could do uh, something that you're probably already familiar with, you could turn the feedback up. So I could turn the feedback up to like here. It's a little bit too much, you know, so maybe I could turn it up to here. All right, so, but instead of using the feedback, I'm just gonna keep the feedback off. So if the feedback's off, this is only gonna give me one delay tail. All right, so only one delay tail. So what I could do is I can add a tap. So number one was my first one, the 16th note. So I'm adding the second one, and I'm going to make this to be four eighth notes. So this one's going to this one's going to um come on the half note. All right, and then I'm going to add a third tap, and this one's going to be add to uh, six eighth notes. And then I'm going to add a fourth tap, and this is going to be eight eighth notes. And then I'm going to adjust the volumes of each tap uh, to get slightly quieter each time. So the volume is going to be zero for the first one. It's going to be minus three for the second one. It's going to be minus six for the third one. And then minus, uh, what did I do, three? So I guess I'll do minus nine for the fourth one. So now this delay sounds like this. So it has four delay tails. So one that's hitting on every um, every yes, uh, quarter note. So two eighth notes is a quarter note. Four eighth notes would be a half note. Uh, six eighth notes would be uh, three quarters of a note. So you see how this is going. You just have to do a little bit of math. 
and you can basically program this to be timed perfectly with the tempo. Um, but I only want it to happen on just that one part there, you know, so this delay, this guitar track is sent to this delay here. So right now as it is, this whole entire track is going to not only have the delay that's coming from the uh, amp simulator module, but it's also going to have this extra super hardcore delay on it for the whole thing. But I don't want that. So what I do is uh, I click on this track and I hit V, the V for volume. So this is going to open up what's known as a volume envelope. And you can just dial in points and this will basically, this is called automation. So I'm automating how this is going to work. So I just want this to happen right here. So if you hold in shift and you click, it makes a point. You hold in shift and click right next to it, it makes another point. And then I want it to cut off right there. So shift, shift. So I really just want this to, I don't want any delay going on at all until it gets to that point right there. And then I don't want any delay. I kind of want it to fade out over time. I can even bring this up a little bit if I want to crank the volume on it a little bit. And then slowly have it fade out and then have it fade out a little bit more. You know, maybe even going into the next, uh, maybe even have it going all the way over here to make a nice transition, something like that. You can play with this curve however you want. But so now, then I want to add another point over here. And then everything after that point, let me move this over a little bit. So now everything after that point, because now this is the other part of the song, um, it's going to sound like this. So I might even want to, uh, you know, mess around with this. So this is this is what I'm talking about, fine tuning. So listening to this whole thing with within the mix now, this uh, delay is this delay channel. It's not going to do anything until it gets to this point because I added this volume automation to it, and then it's going to slowly fade out. And then once it transitions to the ending of the song, um, then it's going to completely cut out. So now listening to this with the mix, let's just listen to the solo here. Now everything's in the mix. You can hide this by just simply going hide envelope. So you won't even see that that automation is there. And then. So hopefully you could uh, hear that. If I wanted to, I could even made it more predominant. I could have, uh, I could have cranked this up even more. You know, I could have cranked it up to you know like plus four decibels. But hopefully, if you were watching the level down here, this level wasn't doing anything until it got to this point. Then you started seeing the level show up over here. So that's just an example of one thing that you could do to fine tune. So these are things that aren't completely obvious when you first open a program like this, but there are a million things. So there's a bunch of tu uh, tutorials on YouTube about how to use Reaper. I've watched tons of tutorials on this program and I'm still learning more about it every day, but I just wanted to show you just, just, you know, give you some creative ideas of things that you can do when you're trying to put a song together. You can have different delays here and different delays there and send this track to that track and all kinds of crazy things. So uh, the possibilities of creativity when, you know, working with a computer and working in a professional doll are endless. So I just wanted to give you one quick example. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video before we're going to wrap it up is uh, just using mixing gear. So if uh, your goal is not to really make nice sounding mixes and stuff like that, and you just kind of want to jam using amp simulations uh, software and maybe just jam over loops or something, you can use cheap headphones like these. These are $20 headphones or something like that. I bought them on eBay maybe 10 years ago, and then I just had to buy a, a quarter inch, an eighth inch to quarter inch jack because these headphones only have an eighth inch jack on there for maybe like $4, so $24, whatever. Cheap headphones, you just plug them into your audio interface headphone jack, and you can jam all night long and no one will ever hear you playing. 
and you could be having a concert going on in your ears. So have a lot of fun with cheap headphones. But if you want to get into mixing, then uh, you know you want flat response monitoring stuff. So uh, the headphones I use, and I really like them, I read a lot of reviews before I bought them, are these uh, AKG K701s. These are open back headphones, and these are designed for mixing. So these are just under $200, which can definitely sound like a lot. But, um, you know, if you want to really get a, an accurate response to what you're hearing without any coloration of the tone, it's known as a flat response. There's no, no EQ curve or anything added to the sound. It's just it's as, as uh, flat as possible with the goal to have your mixes to sound good across all systems. You know, that's why they designed these headphones for that purpose, for mixing purposes. So these, uh, these are open back headphones and... Um, you know, that means not only can you hear what's going on in the headphones, but you can also hear what's going on in the room as well. And they're actually really cool. I really love, you know, making music with these because I, you know, I, I hear the music going on. I can feel the music happening, but I also feel like I'm in the room. I don't feel like I'm disconnected. So, uh, you know, mixing with open back headphones or even just jamming with my amp simulation software using these open back headphones like this, it's really, really fun. So, yeah, look into open back headphones. These, uh, K701s. I've read tons of good reviews about them. So, uh, you know, maybe you might like them as well. And then, uh, you know, if you want to spend a little bit more money, uh, maybe look into uh, studio monitors. So you want to get a pair of studio monitors, one that would plug into the left, one that would plug into the right of your audio interface in the back. Um, the ones I use are the Rocket KRK uh, 7s. So these were about $240 a piece, I believe, if I remember correctly. So, you know, just over uh, 500 bucks, maybe about $550. Um, and the goal of those is also to provide you with a flat response. So if you, uh, you know, if you play through an amp or something, the amp is coloring your tone. That's the whole reason amps sound different from one another. So uh, studio monitors, they're meant to just give you a, a flat response so that you can really uh, listen to your mixes and get your volumes correct and do your EQs properly and things like that. So, you know, those are the studio monitors that I recommend. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you were able to learn some things. Hopefully you were able to see just how powerful working in a uh, doll is on a computer. And all the stuff I did was done in a $60 program, which was really the main point I was trying to show you. You don't need expensive studio equipment to make music you don't need to produce music to mix music to you know you can do it with uh, cheap stuff so i tried to show you all the possibilities of you know the paid tools i use the free tools i use the programs i use and uh there's so much stuff out there you know i'm sure you're going to do your research if you want to get into the, get into this stuff but uh you know that's all i had to say if you like the video feel free to comment any questions feel free to comment i'll see you next time thanks for watching mm -hmm.